as humans, <clears throat> you're either exceeding your limitations or you're not. Really. I mean, you're either stretching them or you're not. Next time, when it comes to tax time, I've already kind of prepped us to make sure we're not going to deal with this again, but it will be well below my limitations. It's the journey that I had to embark on to achieve it, and it's who I had to become, and the skills I had to learn, and the fears I had to face, and and the the, the sleep, hydration, nutrition, training, mobility, the, the, the fundamentals that I now have mastered and understand, I take that with me. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1090. Alan left early. He clocked out early of that episode. The downside of gaining new confidence today for episode number 1091. Happy Sunday. The importance of knowing your current limits. So as you know, on this podcast, we take you behind the scenes of our wins, as well as our potential losses slash jeffings. I got a, an email the other day from our accountant, and she said, hey, do you have all of your tax stuff ready? We have to file your taxes by the 15th, because we got an extension. And I said, absolutely not. None of them are ready. What do you need? And she gave me a list of everything she needed. And I proceeded to freak out and send Alan a message. And I said, Alan, I just need a couple, well, I didn't, I guess I didn't freak out initially. I said, I just Panic need a couple, move. a little Panic bit, move. a little bit. I just need a couple of your bank um, logins and I'm going to log into your credit card. I'll log into your personal bank. I'm going to download your transactions. I'm going to take care of it. Shouldn't be, a, shouldn't be an issue. CFO, I'm the guy. I got this. I, I can take care of it. <laughs> so I download Alan's transactions into a, a PDF and I won't take you through the process of what you have to do because it's a whole thing, but this is what happened. I started doing what had to get done and it took me in two hours, I accomplished roughly nothing. And I'm not exaggerating. I did not accomplish almost anything in two hours. And very quickly I said, okay, yes, I would like to think it's an empowering belief to think I can figure this out by myself. Given enough time, I'm sure I could figure this out by myself. But my current limits when it comes to inputting things into spreadsheets, categorizing them, making everything work is way less than Alan's. I need to get Alan's help on this and we need to make this a priority. So I sent Alan a message and I said, hey man, I know I said I think I can do this on my own, but I put in two hours and I accomplished nothing. I really need you. Like this is beyond my current capabilities in spreadsheets. I just can't do this by myself because number one, it might not get done correctly. Number two, it may never get done ever. It just might never get done because I'm not going to be able to do it. So the next, I don't know if it was the next day, but Monday, usually we record episodes, and we went from 10 a.m. until 1.30 in the morning doing spreadsheets. And yeah. we got all, quote unquote, everything done that we were yeah. supposed to. Wake up Tuesday, and I get a message from the CPA. And who's the best, by the way? She's awesome. But she said, yeah, no. You guys got to like redo all this. Like none of this is right. So I texted Alan and said, hey, I'm gonna, I got I to gotta cancel all my calls, all my podcasts today. I got to do this. So I spent from 10 a.m. until 1230 in the morning doing it. But it's interesting. Now, this episode is going to be different than it was because we're a day removed from what we were actually talking about. But I, my current limits have switched so quickly, Alan. From yeah. day one where I was watching Alan do everything to day two where I'm doing it myself, I'm probably a little bit faster now because I've done it so many times to the point where now it's faster like... Faster than the kid? I think so, yeah. Oh my God. In some things, definitely not. Yeah, no, I'm just joking. But like I, I learned certain things about like how you can format the margins and it's like, it's not that hard to fix the spreadsheet. It's interesting. Nice work. But, and again, I don't know if we're done yet, but it's interesting because now my current limits are way different than they were two, even two days ago. So mm -hmm. I'm happy that we're doing this episode at this time. We're still going through it and figuring out what has to get changed, but it's interesting, number one, what you can do when you figure out your current limits, and number two, how fast your current limits can really change. I want to share this with everyone as well. One of the reasons that these 2021 taxes have been so challenging is that Kevin and I, 
in 2021 transitioned from operating the business from my personal bank. So I had one bank and then I had another credit card. Kevin, you had like five different credit cards and yeah. one bank. That's how we got so, to the business in the, in the beginning. And then we funded. also had a business account, business bank account and a business credit card each. So 2021 was the year for us where we really transitioned from two solopreneurs into like one real bi- yeah. built business. And obviously we filed for an LLC many years ago, but we didn't start operating from one central hub, one central bank account until the tail end of 2021. Yeah. So that's why this has been such a, a thing. So if you're an early entrepreneur and you hear these horror stories, I don't want you to freak out and think that you're up against that because you can be much more uh, effective up front. And if you need help with that kind of stuff, always reach out to Kevin and I. If you're an early entrepreneur or a dream chaser and you you just trust me on this, you don't have to make every mistake that we've made in order to get to where we are. Yes, you're going to make mistakes, 100%. Um, there is no version of achieving a dream where you're not falling down every now and then and making mistakes and hindsight's twenty twenty. and I wish I did set or whatever that. Um, but if you want help, let us know. Speaking of knowing your limits though, so so you went from, I don't think I can do this, I need help, to the humility of I'm going to send Alan an audio, mm. to then the next day you and I spent from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., and I went, I went and worked out after that. Yeah, no, not me. I worked out. I, I walked in the rain. It was a walk slash run. But um, anyways, you went from the day to, that you and I did the work, exporting all the documents, uh, downloading all the documents from all the different bank accounts, mm-hmm. putting them all into one revenue sheet and then one expense sheet, which by the way, I want to share with everyone this as well crawling through that mud together, we learned a lot about our business. Yeah. Uh, one example is we used to use a site called teachable.com f- to host our online courses. And Kevin sent our website person, Alessandro, a message saying, hey, true or false, we don't need teachable.com anymore. Because yeah. we transferred to what? What are we on now? I don't know. Yeah, we're I on a different know. site for, for our courses now. Yeah. Um, and so that saved us money because when you when you really get underneath your expenses and your income and all that, you start to understand where money's going, where you're making money. You just understand everything at a deeper level. It's a side tangent. So you went from, oh my God, I can't do this to, okay, we're good. We got this to, oh my God, I can't do this to, honestly, I can do this alone. Yeah. All within a four day period. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Now, did it suck? Yeah. Like last night I was like, this is, it's just one of those things where I know it's going to suck. I don't, there's nothing I can really do about it. I just got to put my head down and, and do it. It, it sucks. And if we have to redo stuff, it's going to suck. But mm-hmm. my current limit is beyond what I'm doing. I mean, I can do it. What is up, you guys? My name is Gabby, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Kevin and Alan for the community that they have created and the mission that they are on over at Next Level University. Never in a million years did I think when I started listening to the Hyperconscious podcast two years ago that I would be as invested as I am today. But here we are two years later. I have done group coaching. I truly look forward to every single episode they drop, all of the things that they're teaching. And I am now doing one-on-one coaching with Alan to help level up in my business. And all I got to say about these guys across the board is they are true, genuine souls. They mean it when they say they are heart driven and they mean it when they say they are no BS. And I think that's probably my favorite part about them. They get rid of the fluff. They give you tactical tips and tricks to help you level up in your life, to help you make strides towards your goals. And they've created a community of like minded people to lean on each other at every single stage of life. So guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the impact that you have made in my life. And I am so very excited to see the impact and the waves that you make from here on out. And it'll be that way forever. Yeah. You'll, you'll always have a higher set point now. Yeah. You know, and you'll always have a deeper understanding of finances. One of the things, and Kevin, you said this on Monday, you said one of my favorite things about you is just, you just put your head down, whatever. Yeah. Like, no, let's no, just what? do it. No right, what. no matter no matter what, um, and that's the, I think one of the reasons why I feel, one of the reasons I feel so confident that I can achieve things is because I've done that so many times that I kind of know now that we'll find a way. It's not that it's gonna just work out because that it doesn't just work out, but we always everything is figure outable, and I have enough reps of doing it to where 
even when I'm really in over my head, I feel like we're going to figure it out and it's going to suck to your point. And it did, it really did suck. And so you did two days of what I did one, one day. So my goodness, Kevin got up on the group coaching call. So we, we prep before every group coaching session. He jumps on, he's like, Hey man, um, is there any way that you can do this solo? And I was like, I got you. No worries. Yeah. Um, and so we took some L's along the way, but I think the, the real lesson, the real takeaway for me here is I think you will forever have more self-confidence when it comes to spreadsheets, when it comes to finances, when it comes to QuickBooks, when it comes to businesses. And I don't know about you, Kev, but now, I mean, I'm, you know, at Hannaford's, the grocery store, and I'm, I'm looking, looking at and thinking about, okay, what do you think their gross revenue is? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how much do you think they're paying each team member? You know? How much do you think they're grossing per month? Do, what, what are they spending? What's their biggest expense? Like, and I'm always seeing these spreadsheets. Whenever I walk into a business, I was I got Harry's Pizza yesterday. We didn't get pizza. We got subs. You saw it. Saw it come that's through. That's why the old, I was like, Alan got food last night. Tonight's the night for the kid. Tonight's the night for Kev. Uh, so we got three subs: steak combos, extra grilled onions. Awesome. Okay. Emilia and I, and the business. In my head, it's like. They're really nice people. Uh, every time we go in there, they, they treat us with so much kindness. And their food is really, really good. The place itself could use some, like, you know, better lighting and of that course. kind of thing. You know which place I'm talking about? Of course. But yeah. I'm always thinking about, every time I am a customer of a business, I'm always thinking about the spreadsheets and the financial statements and how much money they make, how much money they pay, how much money, what what their margins are, how much they charge and why, whether or not they have a marketing budget. I'm always thinking of all that. Mm. And so the point I'm making here is that Kevin went from, oh my God, I can't do this to super empowered in a very short amount of time. And you're never going to look at business the same. You know, you'll, you'll always understand the numbers at a little bit of a deeper level than you did prior to these last couple days. So crawling through the mud is not for nothing. Crawling through the mud, I said this on group coaching last night, I said this trophy behind me, it's just a hunk of metal to everybody else. It doesn't mean anything. But to me, it means something because it took years for me to achieve this. I went from like really out of shape, skinny fat, 160 pound, drank too much and too often to like an, uh, in enough shape to actually win a fitness show. Mm. That for me, it has nothing to do with this hunk of metal. This hunk of metal means nothing. It's just a it's just a piece of plastic slash metal. I don't even know if it's metal. Plastic. Mm -hmm. And but it, it's it's the journey that I had to embark on to achieve it, and it's who I had to become, and the skills I had to learn, and the fears I had to face, and and the 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 sleep, hydration, nutrition, training, mobility, the 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 fundamentals that I now have mastered and understand. I take that with me, and so twenty twenty one taxes crawling through the, that mud, feeling overwhelmed and, and sh struggle bus, it became something more because you overcame it and now it, it's going to compound for the rest of our life. Yeah. For the rest of our life, you'll always, you'll always be better off. And I think if more people had that mentality, um, they, they would be better off in the long run. And, and the very last thing I'll say, Kev, before I let you talk here, sorry, is and I said this on the group coaching call too. I said, that marathon didn't mean much to anybody else. And I, and I don't care. And I quite frankly kind of failed based on what I thought would happen. But what is cool about me doing that is that I'll always believe in myself just a little bit more. Because when you do a marathon on a whim, everything seems easy in comparison. I'm telling you, like that day with the finances spreadsheets for 12 hours straight where we're like, couldn't even see straight at the end. Yeah, it was brutal. It's like, it's easy in comparison. So I have a new set point for what I can tolerate. And I think that there's, some, it's just empowering. So doing hard things is empowering. And I think knowing your limits is as well. But um, what are your thoughts on all that? <laughs> I, it's what the, the thing that really jumped off the page for me is how much you can learn when you do 30 hours of deep work. I feel like I learned so much. And that's the interesting thing, right? How many people have been in, and obviously if you're in finance or, you know, you have, but how many people have been in spreadsheets for 30 hours? E yeah. Even in the grand scheme of things. I mean, that's a half hour a day for 60 days. Like, Unless you're a CPA or a, in finance. Yeah. You yeah, probably they, haven't, right? You probably so haven't. Yeah. That, that helps me a lot. And it's interesting now because my current limits are different now. So when I, am I looking forward to doing more of that? Absolutely not. No. 
But, and this is the other thing too, and I do have to bounce after I say this. We, as humans, <clears throat> you're either exceeding your limitations or you're not. Really. I mean, you're either stretching them or you're not. Next time, when it comes to tax time, I've already kind of prepped us to make sure we're not going to deal with this again, but it will be well below my limitations. It'll yeah. be easy. It'll be like, this is nothing. I, this is nothing compared to what it was. So to 100%. your point, Alan, if you run a marathon and then you run a mile you know, two weeks later, that mile is probably not going to seem that difficult. Yeah, it's going to be a piece of cake. Unless you get a cramp. Right. Yeah. Uh, Kev, I, I know you got to go. I asked you this earlier. Oh, yeah. I said, Kev, have we put in place, to your awareness, from zero to 10, how certain are you that we're not going to deal with this again yeah. next year? And you said, oh, 10 out of 10, we're yeah. good. So from now on forever, Kevin, as a CFO, we're going to be able to do taxes 10 times better. And we're going to be able to be more intelligent with it. We're going to be more clear on our expenses and where our money's going and how to organize it. It's it's really a good lesson for everybody is when you crawl through the mud, you come out stronger and you come out smarter every single time. Um and yeah, your your limits really do expand. And then everything else feels like child's play. One mile does feel like child's play. Even a half marathon, I thought about this the other day. The, ha the first half marathon was actually pretty easy. I know now that I can go do a half marathon if I want to. Like pretty much any time I want. It was actually quite easy. The full marathon was horribly difficult and shockingly difficult, actually. Um, so I don't want to ever do that again, quite frankly. <laughs> but it's important to know. How do you know your limits if you never test them? Cool. Yeah. I dig it. I, this was good. I, enjoy, I enjoyed this one very much. Yeah, don't be afraid to find your limits. You don't have to live there. You can just explore them. Say, ah, that's a little, that's a little too far. Cool. You can yeah, take don't a... Don't live always, there. Yeah, don't live there. No, <laughs> don't do, do live not live there. there. <laughs> Next Level Nation Group Coaching Round 8 starts October 4th, 2022. I have to go because I'm getting on a podcast. Uh, quickly, Alan, you have 10 seconds to talk about something. I have 10 seconds to talk. All right, how to finally put yourself first. What if... What is best for you is what's best for the world. Monthly meetup number 10, October 6th, 2022, starts at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link will be in the show notes to register. Please join us. The last one had like 23 people on it. Dude. It was awesome. Self-belief, self-worth, all of the above. Talk soon. Strong work. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 1092. What are your real non-negotiables as always we love you we appreciate you grateful for each and every one of you and as always at nlu we do not have fans we have family we will talk to you all tomorrow please reach out